Hi, I'm Beth from Sew Country, and today's video is going to be a quick, fun tutorial on the Little Gecko by Oh So Gecko. This wallet is designed for business cards. You have a pull tab on the back, and when you pull it up, it will lift your business card out. You could also use this to hold a credit card or your driver's license and things of that nature. You can also even put a D-ring here and I can show you those options at the end of this video. The pattern is really well written. It's a simple design. It comes together super quick. I wanted to make this tutorial to not only show you how quick and easy this pattern comes together, but also to give you a couple other ideas of how this pattern could benefit you. Yes, you can use it for business cards, your driver's license, things of that nature, but you can also use it as a last minute gift. You can make this up and you can put a gift card in it to give someone, and so it's just a little bit prettier of a way to give a gift card. And I also thought a clear vinyl option was a fun one to try too for younger kids. This one comes together even quicker than this one because I did use just a piece of ribbon and honestly with this one you don't need to top stitch at the top because it really didn't add any like improvements to the look so I would even skip top stitching on the clear vinyl. The pattern is originally designed for cork but any non-fraying raw edge material can be used. So in this video, I'm actually making mine out of a vinyl just like this. I am a nanny, so my idea for this does come from my job. I want to make this for my nanny kids as a tooth fairy kind of carrying pouch. So what they would do is the, the kid would still put their tooth on their pillow, but the mom and the dad would put the money in here, and in the morning the kid can just pull the tab and get their little surprise money there. And I thought that was so cute and just is such a fun way to use this pattern in a different format than what it was originally intended. So this pattern comes together really quick, it's super easy, and I'm gonna show you the steps right now. You only need three pieces for this pattern. You need a piece one, a piece two, and a piece three. No interfacing is required, so that's really all you cut out. It's great for scraps. You can cut out different pieces of, like you can have this one color and this another color. So this is a good way if you're doing craft shows too to kind of get a couple of quick cheaper gifts to build up your table if you have it if it's not enough stuff on your table and you want your table to look a little bit fuller make up a few of these and that'll fill out some of the space there. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of marks on the back of piece one. What we're going to do is we're going to fold our piece one in half against the long edge. So here's our long edge, we'll fold it in half. Then we're going to make two marks at the top that are the center of this now folded edge. Once you have these center marks, you're going to come down and you're going to draw a line. The pattern's going to tell you how long this line's going to be. I'm not going to do it for the purpose of this video. I'm trying to be more careful in the videos with not giving out that kind of information. But you're going to center that line right below your center mark on both sides. That's all you do. Now you're ready to sew this together. Once we start sewing, I'm going to top stitch along this top raw edge. I'm also going to top stitch all along this connector piece. This is piece two. So let's go ahead and do that now. Top stitching just an eighth of an inch away. So now that I've top stitched around both pieces, now it's time for that final construction and then you're done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around so that my piece one is wrong side up. I'm going to take my piece two and I'm going to draw a line according to the measurements given in the pattern at the top. I'm going to take this short edge of my piece two and place it directly on that line that I made on my piece one. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stitch a box that is not past that line I drew. That line that I drew will be the stopping mark and where I pivot to go across my piece two. I went ahead and sewed the box that I drew and I connected piece two and piece one. You do see that stitching from the front. The pattern tells us that if you have a 
label or if you even just want to do another piece of cork or vinyl over top of that as a decor decorative piece you can I don't do that um, I find that it's not that big of a deal to have that little bit of stitching there she also tells you you can either draw um, so an X in this box but I typically like to put a rivet let me show you what that looks like right there in the middle there and I just think that's a, a cute way to add a little bit more stability in this wallet I'm not adding the rivet on camera just because it's hard for me to bring my supplies over here to do that but what you will do if you decide to do the rivet is you just use your hole punch and I use one of the small six millimeter rivets not one of the larger ones and then I just add the rivet there if you want to sew a box you can go ahead and do that now that part's done okay the next thing we're going to do this is what we have right here and now the next thing we're going to do is this line here I'm going to use my hole punch and I'm going to punch two holes in that line and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my small rotary cutter to just cut on that line from one hole to the next I'm going to use this small rotary cutter and I'm just going to do it right here on my table because I don't need to press hard so I won't be going through and cutting at my table and this is just really simple to go from one hole to the next the hole is cut now what I do is I just take this piece to push it through there so what you're going to be looking at is it's going to look like this. It's not twisted. When I come to the back, you can see I'm looking at the right sides of both pieces. If yours does not look like this, you'll need to switch it around. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip along all the sides of my little wallet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew all three sides. We're not sewing the top, of course, because that's where we're putting everything in. Honestly, don't have to sew along all three sides, but you can see in this one, it does kind of bow out a little bit when you don't sew that side. Even the cards then could come out, but on the other one, when you sew all along the three sides, nothing comes out. So I do, uh, I do think it's best to sew along all three sides to have a more secure fit on this little wallet. I'm just going to sew an eighth of an inch away from all sides. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to attach piece three. Now when you put piece three here you're going to notice that it's slightly larger than your tab piece two. That is designed that way on purpose so that it won't slide all the way back down there and be lost in there again. So you want to leave it that size. Don't try to trim it down. So I just fold that in half, wrong sides together, and I just slip it on there. And then I'm simply going to sew around all four sides of that piece three to secure it to the piece two. And now my wallet is fully finished. If you wanted to, you can go ahead and add a rivet one or two on this little pull tab, just like I did on this one for another little bit of extra decoration. And I do want to show you a couple ways you could attach a D-ring on here if you wanted to. On this side, you could just go ahead and cut a small strip of cork or vinyl and use a half of an inch D-ring to rivet it right here in place or even sew it in place. But there is a, a rivet corset snap, but I'm gonna show you that that you can get from Amazon and that will make it a little bit quicker for you to do it. On this wallet where I have the, whole, the three sides sewn, I would probably just wanna do it up in the corner because it doesn't have this folded edge. So this, you could put it right here, but on this one, you would wanna put it on this side. So let me show you that real quick. You can get these corset rings or hooks. I think they're called on Amazon. If anyone's interested, I can put the link in the description. But all it is is a little teeny hook that you can rivet on. So you would just rivet it on the front or on the side if you didn't sew that side edge. But if you sew all three sides like you should, you would just rivet it right there. 
And then you could attach this to your key ring or a swivel hook or and put on a lanyard or whatever you want. And that's just another option of a way that you can customize this to make it work to suit your needs, whether you're using it for your driver's license credit card or for business cards or whatever, you can keep it handy. So a lot of cute ways to make this wallet work for you. And I just wanted to show a couple of things on it. If you have any questions, I know I went over this tutorial really quick. If you have any questions, just let me know and I'll explain it better. But I love the pattern. I think it's great. I'll have the link for the pattern in my description. And you can also join the Oh So Gecko Facebook group. She's really sweet and has a lot of great ideas. And she does weekly chats to kind of help people get more used to sewing with cork and to learn the best tips with it. Thanks so much. And you guys have a great day.